Islam to all the Moors, I self law and master. That's what that means. Uh, I self law and master. Okay, let's get started. Here we go. We're going to begin Scorpio, page 160. Our textbook, The Gospel and the Zodiac, The Secret Truth About J.C. the Christ Figure, by the Reverend Bill Darlinson. Okay? So like and share the video, y'all. If you've been here more than once, uh, that's right. If you came back for more, you should subscribe. <laughs> okay, especially if you've been here more than two times, you, you definitely uh, need to subscribe. All right, no, no one-way relationship with me. Okay, if you come, uh, you learn from this content, you enjoy this content, and you keep coming. Keep coming means you come back uh, more than once. I expect you to subscribe. You stay for five minutes or more. I expect you to subscribe. Okay? Now, of course, this is a gentleman's agreement. Okay? If you don't like it, leave. Um, but if you stay, like the video and share the video. If you've been here more than once, again, subscribe. Okay? I need you all to do that because my channel is shadow banned. So YouTube uh, sending out notifications just doesn't happen, all right? I think the last time I checked my analytics, I think they sent out notices to three or six people. <laughs> all, of the tr all of the views come from uh, social media and actually web browsers, okay? They don't come from notifications. Only a few notifications were sent out. Literally, a few. So here we are, page 160. Now, I have a lot of uh, things that I disagree with the author about in terms of uh, his conclusions and his rationale. But this is only one book. He got his conclusions from other books that are cited. All right, from very old books that he cited, okay? So for me, I think uh, Scorpio needs to be, uh, we need to think about that, rethink it, okay? Rethink it, okay? So let's continue, <clears throat> page 160. Such power is not always negative. Now remember, what power is he talking about? The Scorpio personality, domineering, likes to be out in the front, okay? Can never be second. Take that to the extreme, you get a narcissistic personality, okay? Take it to another extreme, you, maybe you get a sociopath, okay? You can get an extremely jealous person, right? So just all of these uh, traits are on page 160, okay, the first paragraph, all right? So such power is not always negative, of course. Surgery and medicine come under Scorpio, two for obvious reasons. So here are the obvious reasons. The physician who symbol is the scorpion serpent twined? Let me let them finish. All right. So surgery and medicine come under Scorpio too for obvious reasons. The physician whose symbol is the scorpionic serpent twined around or wrapped around the caudices 
is the one who has the power over life and death, who can restore the weak to health and give vitality to the marabond, to the sick, those who have no energy. Right? Like Pluto, he guards the way to the underworld. So Scorpio guards the way, or the snake, or the eagle, right? In ancient times, uh, Scorpio, the scorpion, was a serpent and an eagle. So like Pluto, he guards the way to the underworld and lets enter whom he will. Y'all got that? So Scorpio is letting people enter into the, the underworld is death. So Scorpio has a power over life and death. Scorpio will decide when it's curtains. <laughs> when somebody expires, okay? This is Scorpio. Now, this idea of a physician, I'm a physician, it is not ancient. The autochthonous people, we had people who did what? They had a knowledge of herbs or herbology. Not only herbology, because remember, herbology is not, well, the herbs are not the most important thing. Always remember this, scholars. Health is a frame of mind first. It is a frame of mind first. A healthy mind and healthy habits. A healthy mind and healthy habits. Your mind can produce any drug, any drug. Perfectly, no side effects. So our ancient ancestors knew how to use and control consciousness to produce and maintain good health. All right? Now, the purpose of the herbs, listen y'all, don't forget this. The purpose of the herbs are simply to provide minerals, minerals to catalyze biochemical reactions, period. That is to say, when you have a mineral deficiency, biochemical reactions that use that mineral, they either won't uh, run to completion, they'll stop somewhere, somewhere along the pathway, because it has no more mineral to catalyze the reaction. So it's going to stop. That presents as symptoms or illness, or you absolutely have nothing, right? The reaction won't run at all. Clear? More importantly, and I'm going to speak from my own experience and my knowledge of what our ancestors did, okay, from both of those points of view, and that's what I'm talking to you from now. Through your mind, You create, or you make the decision, and to create the desire, and you do this through willpower. Stop eating, I did it. Stop eating one day, two days, three days, four days, five days. And you'll have symptoms like hunger pains, right? Headaches, maybe you feel a little bit dizzy. Okay, so you're going to have some symptoms. Most people, me fortunately, I never really had any symptoms. Okay, both, that, both times I did a long-term fast. I, I didn't have any symptoms. But it's because of the way I went into it. That's why I didn't have symptoms, okay? You need to know how to go into it. So most 
and not most importantly, second most importantly, other than the mental. You have to put your body in the starvation state. Yes, you need to put your body in the starvation state. That takes a decision to do it. It takes willpower to do it day after day after day. You're dealing with being hungry, headache, dizziness, whatever those symptoms are going to be for you. But on day four or day five, I, like most other people, no longer felt hungry. No more hunger. No more hunger symptoms. My body shifted from getting energy from the food that I eat or ate every day, eat every day, glucose, to burning fat. To burning fat. Now, I'm muscular, always have been, you know, after, uh, after high school. In high school, I was skinny. <laughs> Actually, I think I didn't start getting, I didn't start uh, weight training until I was in my 30s. Actually, I was skinny. Okay? Really skinny. Um, but strong. But anyway. So you can, be, you can be very skinny or thin, and you can have fat around your organs. Most of y'all might be familiar with the beer belly or pop belly. Your body begins to burn off or to create energy, convert that fat into energy, okay, ATP. And that's how you fuel your body. So your brain is getting the uh, ketones, so you feel very good. <clears throat> and then the herbs become important, right? The herbs become important then. Because when you come off of that fast properly, you have to come off of it properly, otherwise it can be life-threatening. A water fast can be life-threatening if you come off of it improperly, okay? You need to have those herbs available, or you can take the herbs a little bit every day and nothing else, nothing else. But unless you put your body in the fasting state, the herbs will not help you, not that much. You'll be, if you, if you recover any, you'll be sick. Uh, You'll be sick again, it's just a matter of time, okay? It's just a matter of time. So even when you take the herbs and you do everything properly, right? And when I say properly, I'm talking about uh, sleeping, how you need to sleep, the amount of water you drink, the amount of uh, herbs that you intake, all of these things, okay? You do everything properly. You come off of it properly. Uh, you're eating or drinking the right things or intake, your nutritional intake is proper after the first couple weeks. Y'all know that if you continue back in your same lifestyle, you're gonna be sick right again with the same illness and maybe even worse. Y'all know that? So be careful when you go out here and spend a lot of money on herbs. Manage your expectations. It's really not going to do too much for you. Okay? But our ancient ancestors knew this process. They knew the method that I'm talking about to you right now. They knew it. They could even look at your face and tell what's happening inside your body. And they would know exactly what to do to bring you back to normal health. These are ancient sciences. It had nothing to do with a physician giving you medicine. When I say medicine, I mean, uh, you know, artificial medicines, things that are not natural. It had nothing to do with the surgery. 
Our ancestors could look at your face and tell what was wrong, what was deficient, and fix you up through diet. Okay? Through diet. And a way to do that, just for me and my experience, is water fast. Okay? Water fast. Okay? Then the herbs can really, really help you. Right? Because you're, you're getting rid of all of the toxins. You're getting rid of that dangerous, unhealthy fat around your organs in your belly. You're giving your organs a chance to rest. They actually get to rest. All right, so injured cells or injured tissues, injured cells, cells that are infected with some type of organism living inside of it. All right, cells whose DNA have, has a problem. Like, let's say DNA, uh, problems caused by viruses, okay? All of these are going to be killed and recycled, okay? So whatever useful nutrient, whatever nutrients are in there, whatever the cells can recover, your body is gonna, on its own, destroy those cells and reuse whatever can be reused. Then you're gonna, it's gonna produce stem cells these are pluripotential cells. They can become anything that the body wants. Yeah, this is what happens when you put yourself in the fasting state. But you need the proper minerals for the biochemical reactions to take place from start to finish so that something that they call autophagy can take place completely which is the destruction, recycling, and then regeneration of cells, tissues. And you got a whole new body out of that process of not eating and using minerals. Y'all see it, our ancestors knew this. Wasn't about some physicians. So I wanna make that point. And this idea of a scorpionic serpent twisting up on that stick or that pole, right? This, that, that represents the sign of medicine. In my point of view, this again is talking about the hybrid ideas. The hybrid ideas because physicians are not ancient, okay? These medicines that they're using are not ancient. We used nature. For example, we would take the sap from an evergreen tree. Y'all know what I'm talking about? The sap from an evergreen tree. Our answer said that it's a universal, it can fix everything, all right? No matter what illness you have, that sap will bring you back to normal health. Y'all hear me? 100% gum spirits. 100% gum spirits, okay? That's just one, but there are many. There are many, many. It's popularly, popularly known to remove parasites from your body, right y'all? But anyway, let's make the distinction between physicians and this concept of using artificial substances or medicines is not something that we did. We use nature. And through this whole process I had, y'all, I'm telling y'all a story. Through water fasting, I began, I came to realize that me, maybe all people, but me, 
I don't need to need I don't need to eat every day. I can go nine days. This is just my judgment, right? Oops. I can go nine days, or perhaps I probably should have regular intervals of nine days without eating. Because we don't need to eat every day. When you eat every day, from what I found out from my personal experience, it causes illness. Because we have excess, especially with a Western diet, is horrible. Foods, they sit in your stomach. The oils, they accumulate and they retain toxins, right? Fat-soluble toxins. But anyway, I'm kind of getting off topic. I wanted to draw your attention to the distinction of this physician, okay? We had people who use herbs. Do y'all know what they call those people, these wise women? They have been vilified. They have been vilified in Christian doctrine. All right. So the physician whose symbol is a scorpionic serpent twined around the codices is the one who has the power over life and death. I say, I disagree with that. I have power over life and death through what? Through my mind, my willpower, my diet. Y'all see that? It's not somebody else outside of me. It's me who has the power over life and death. I'm my own physician, my own savior, my own healer. Through the decisions that I make, my consciousness, I want to be healthy. That's a decision. For example, I don't drink Coca-Cola, soft drinks. Why? I want to be healthy. I don't drink sugary drinks. I don't eat processed foods, at least that I'm aware of. And I don't eat a lot of fish, especially farm-raised fish that I'm aware of. Why? Heavy metals. Why? Because I'm conscious I want to be healthy. I want to be healthy. And so when I'm presented with situations where that's all there is to eat near me, I don't eat. Okay? That's willpower. Or I do a water fast. Or I do intermediate fasting. Sometimes I wake up in the morning, I don't eat until evening, y'all. I might do that a couple days in a row. Sometimes I, you, sometimes I can look at myself and I can see I, I've lost weight in my face. Because sometimes I'm only eating once a day. Some days I won't even eat. Right? But some days I might eat a lot. It all balances out. But anyway, let's continue with this. In modern astrology, the planet Pluto is said to be the quote-unquote ruler of Scorpio. That's in modern astrology. So this implies that in ancient astrology, Pluto was not the ruler, right? But this planet that is Pluto was unknown in the ancient world. And Mars was considered to be the ruler of Scorpio. Now, I trust my ancestors. I don't trust the hybrid troglodyte negrus. I don't trust them. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to go with Mars. Weren't we told to go back to the ways of our ancient foremothers and forefathers? Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, weren't we, weren't we told that? Noble Drew Ali said the same thing, didn't he? He said the same thing. So we need to respect the knowledge, the knowledge base the science of our ancient foremothers and forefathers. We know we're dealing with habitual pathological liars, right? The hybrids, habitual pathological uh, uh, liars who are only concerned about what they were commissioned to do. 
which is to have superiority over us, to dominate, have us in subjection. I'm getting this from Genesis chapter 1. Y'all follow me? Okay, now let's continue. For Ptolemy, the quote, destructive and inharmonious qualities of Mars are consistent with the fact that the two signs, it, it is Mars rules, Aries and Scorpio are in quote, square unquote, that is a 90 degree relationship with Cancer and Leo. The signs ruled respectively by the moon and the sun. This is a quote from Ptolemy page 81. Ptolemy was a Egyptian, y'all, back in the day, long time ago. You can read about Ptolemy actually in this book. Y'all wanna know more about him? Okay, we noted the characteristics of Mars in the chapter on Aries. And these characteristics apply as much to Scorpio as they do to Aries. But the fixed water sign has difficulty externalizing them, and so they tend to operate more covertly. That means they're not as prominent uh, in Aries. They operate more covertly than in Aries. Let me repeat that. Covertly, they're more obvious than they are in Aries, okay? So you see it more prominently in Scorpio. In its scorpionic mode of expression, Mars has less of an outlet. And this is symbolic of explosive power, at times as deadly as the scorpion sting. Ptolemy also tells us that, March, that Mars rules the Gentiles and that it, let me backtrack for a minute. So this seems to suggest that people who are born in Scorpio may have uh, explosive personalities. Explosive personalities, I don't know if they're talking about controlled explos explosiveness or uncontrolled explosiveness. So if you explode at the right time, at the right person, for the right situation, there's nothing wrong with that. It's very appropriate. If you explode at the wrong person, it's not appropriate. If you explode at the wrong time, that's also not appropriate. Y'all got it? If you explode for the wrong reason, that's also uh, not appropriate. So the author needs to speak more clearly. Y'all see what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with exploding. Sometimes you need to explode. A controlled explosion is very often appropriate behavior. See, if you don't do that, somebody might go from bad to worse, or you might have to go to the next step. All right? And you don't need to do that if you can avoid it. So you might need to explode. Check somebody. Right? Show them where the line is. Show them the boundaries. They might not appreciate that smooth approach that you usually take. All right? Some people only respond or they respond best to explosivity. <laughs> so let's get into what Ptolemy says that Mars rules the genitals. Okay? This is what Ptolemy says. Okay. Assumes command, that is, uh, Scorpio assumes command of manhood. Okay, so he's talking about men, not women right now. So he should have said the genitals of men or the male genitals. Assumes command of manhood for the space of 15 years. He introduces severity and misery into life. All right, so I think he's talking about a person who's focused on sex. Okay, you're going to experience some severe 
uh, severely unhappy, maybe even dangerous situations. Okay, and you're gonna be miserable if you're chasing sex, for sure. And implants cares and troubles in the soul and in the body, giving it, as it were, some sense and notion of passing its prime. In other words, uh, the young man begins to realize he's getting older, all right? And he begins to realize that death is imminent. It's a possibility. It will happen to you. You can't escape it, okay? So once a person begins to realize this, the man, the mature man, he's getting older, he begins to feel an urge, right? Let's, let me continue reading. Before it approaches, that's before death approaches, before death approaches or his life ends by labor to accomplish something among its undertakings that is worthy of note. Ptolemy, page 81. So what the author is saying here, well, what Ptolemy is saying is that at some point a man begins to realize he's getting older and that he will die. When he gets to that point where he realizes that he wants to make something happen or to do something that's good, have a legacy. He wants to accomplish things with his life. So now he begins to work toward accomplishing something meaningful to leave a legacy for his young ones, his family, whatever, or to just 